Okay, coming on back, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean identities. These three you need to copy down and you need to memorize, or at least memorize how to use them. You practice them so frequently they become kind of put in your brain. Of course, I'll provide a formula chart, but again, if you're not practicing these and you're not recognizing them, the formula chart cannot help you. So if cotangent theta is equal to two and cosine theta is less than zero, what does that mean? It means it is negative. Then I want you to find sine and cosine. Great, cool. So I look at my Pythagorean identities. I could look back at my quotient and reciprocal identities. And so this would be the quotient identity of cosine over sine. Does does that help me? I don't have enough information. Doesn't help me. I could look at the reciprocal identity and say that it's one over tan. Again, does that help me? It doesn't help me. So that's how I knew I could like negate, say no to the other identities, and I move straight into the cotangent or the Pythagorean identities. Why do I know I can do that? Well, because if I know cotangent, I can use this identity right here. Cotangent squared plus one is equal to cosecant squared. And if I can solve for cosecant, then that means I'm actually solving for sine. So we can go ahead and start there. So I grab my Pythagorean identity. I know this is literally equal to two, and then obviously it's going to be squared, so I can plug that in. Two squared is just four. Four plus one is five. Now, if I square root cosecant squared to get cosecant by itself, I actually end up with this. And this is where kids might inherently make a mistake, is they might forget that this is a plus or minus. Remember, the square root of four is not two. It is plus or minus two because one of those answers we're about to reject. We're going to use our concept of all students take calculus to solve this. So I've got a little summary right up right here. But before I show you that summary, let's just try it together. If I know that cotangent theta is equal to 2, so then where is cotangent positive? Well, I don't really know cotangent, but I know it's reciprocal. Tangent, where is tangent positive? Oh, it's positive over here and over here. So that means I can't even look at these quadrants. Okay, well, if I know cosine is negative, where is cosine negative? Well, cosine is negative here and here. Okay, well, I don't even want this quadrant. And again, I already crossed this quadrant out. So the only quadrant I'm left in is quadrant three. Well, cosecant better be negative in quadrant three. So my answer actually isn't plus or minus. It's simply going to be minus. But again, we're not solving cosecant. We're solving sine. So we also have to flip it. So let me show you my answer now. So we're solving for sine. So we're looking at cosecant. So we know we have the reciprocal. So we're going to flip it. Again, since cotangent is positive and cosecant is negative, then therefore sine must be negative. Or you can see it as tangent is positive, cosecant is negative. Sine must be negative, cosecant must be negative. Remember, the reciprocals, when we talk about positive, negative, those are interchangeable. When tan is positive, so must cotan. When sine is positive, so must cosecant. When cosine is positive, so must secant. So I now know my answer is only negative one over the square root of five, or if I conjugate it, negative, the square root of five over five. And that's just something we kind of forget that those are interchangeable answers right there. All right. So from the previous slide, we now know that sine is equal to negative one over the square root of five. So I go ahead and plug this in. Why did I choose this formula instead of my Pythagorean identities or anything else? Well, let's try. My Pythagorean identity is equal to this Okay, well, how does that help me? Well, it doesn't, right? Because I'm looking, I already have cosecant, I have cotan. Okay, that doesn't quite help me. I guess I could technically use um, some other ones, peanut butter and jelly tell me that's fine, but just going through just basic uh, cotangents reciprocal identity is one over tan. Again, that doesn't help me find cosine. So it's just about rejecting identities that don't help us. It's not that, you know, somebody else couldn't have used it, but Whatever you see is the pattern that you want to pursue. So I know cotangent and I know sine, so I can plug those in. Ta-da! So I plug in 2 and I plug in negative 1 over the square root of 5, and now I solve for cosine. It's just that simple. Well, again, here a common mistake might occur. Kids might multiply by the reciprocal, thinking that they're, okay, there's something I'm getting rid of. Well, I like your thought process. However, you're getting rid of the entire denominator. So make sure you're multiplying by the entire denominator. So I multiply by the entire denominator. I can now get rid of it on the right-hand side. On the left, I just multiply across and ta-da, I end up with my answer. I can verify that I know that cosine should be negative. Oh, look at that, cosine should be negative. So boom, I got my two answers. Now, go ahead and try.